So we have four vertebrae here. We have a lumbar vertebrae, a thoracic vertebrae, and then two cervical vertebrae. And we're going to talk about the different features that are common to them all, and then some of the features that um, specific vertebrae have. So the first feature we're going to talk about is the body. And so on the lumbar vertebrae here, you can see we have a very large body that is used for supporting weight. As we go further up the vertebral column, we get to the thoracic vertebrae, and we can see that the body here is a little smaller. Now, these didn't necessarily come from the same vertebral column, but nevertheless, the pattern is similar. When we come to the cervical vertebrae, here on, here on axis, we can see that the body is even smaller than the thoracic vertebrae. By the time we get to C1, atlas, we can see that there is no body. And it's thought that in development that the body of atlas moved down to C2, and this is it here. And this is called the orthodontoid process, or more commonly known as the dens. Next, we're going to look at the spinous process. And the spinous process are those ridges that you feel up and down your back. So with the lumbar vertebrae, you can see that this is the spinous process here. With the thoracic vertebrae, we have the spinous process here. And part of the features of the thoracic vertebrae is that the spinous process is hooked, or it angles down from the level of the vertebrae. By the time we get to the cervical vertebrae, we can see that here is the spinous process, and this, it is bifurcated, which means it's split, and all of the cervical vertebrae, their spinous process is bifurcated, except for C7. Here on atlas, we can see we don't really have much of a spinous process. Next, we have the transverse processes. So on our lumbar vertebrae, our transverse process is here. On the thoracic vertebrae, we can see that we have the transverse process here. Then on C2, our transverse process are on each side here. And we can even see that we have these foramen on each side. And these are called transverse foramen, and they are unique to the cervical vertebrae. So how you define a cervical vertebrae is by the transverse foramen. We can see on Atlas, we have the transverse foramen here. The hole that the spinal cord runs through is called the vertebral foramen. So we can see it here on the lumbar vertebrae, here on the thoracic, and it's quite obvious on axis and atlas. We also have superior and inferior articulating faucets. So if we take a look at atlas here, we can see that the superior articulating faucets articulate with the occipital condyles and allow the head to go in the movement of yes. And the inferior occipital, I mean the inferior articulating faucets are here. Now on Atlas, these faucets are horizontal. They're more in the plane of the bone. As we move down to the thoracic vertebrae, we can see that here we have our superior articulating faucets. And if we turn it over, here we have the inferior articulating faucets. And these are much more in a much more vertical plane than we saw when looking at the faucets on Atlas. On our lumbar vertebrae, we can see that we have the superior articulating faucets right here and the inferior articulating faucets are right here. There is also this part of the vertebrae here, which is a little foot where the processes join on to the body, that these are called the pedicles. So we can see it right here. And then the spinous process is made up of the lamellae that fuse on each side. Oh, 
So also, we have the vertebral notch right here. And if two vertebrae are placed together, they form the intervertebral foramen. So we can see, well, that's not a very good one. We can see here that we have the intervertebral foramen right there. If we look at the lumbar, we can see the intervertebral foramen there. And holding the vertebrae like this, you can also see how the superior and inferior fossets articulate together. So between the vertebrae, we have the intervertebral discs, which are a cartilaginous joint, but yet between the articulating fossets here, this is a synovial joint.